One of the things that came up, you know, when you were talking about, uh, you know, family as an example, is it strikes me that there can also be examples where for the most part, say that's your most important value, 80% of the time, if you look at your behavior, it's true. And it and it looks like your behavior reflects that family is the most important thing. But then there are little moments. Like I think for myself, one of the things that I have a hard time with that I feel like I'm always perpetually working on is just making sure that I actually stop working at some point in the day and fully transition to be fully present. And so anyways, it's also just helpful. Once you know your top values, you can also then think about and ask yourself the question, what could I be doing more? So even if you do feel relatively good about it, it still feels like it's a chance to explore and get a little bit deeper. I want to ask just one exercise, which is just to make it tangible for people listening. One of the exercises I know you talked about in the past, I'll just maybe, you know, tee up for you is stack ranking your values and getting it down to just three. Can you talk about that exercise and why it's important? Sure. Yeah. I just didn't want to repeat myself. Um, this is the the first record exercise that I recommend to a lot of people called the top values exercise. Not something that we made up. We're not that clever. We've adapted from this, this great book called the fifth discipline field book, but we have a easy notion template where you can work through it on your own. And essentially you start with here, are all the things that you value, and then you work down here are my top 10, here are my top five, here are my top three. And at this point, people are getting really uncomfortable. It's like, oh, like is, you know, is this thing actually that important to me? Like, oh, I want them all. I want to do all these things. The biggest thing is you have to say, this is my most important value. And as they say, this is the most important. And again, that could be anything. There's no right answer to what it is. It's like in your scorecard, whatever you think is most valuable, whatever you are optimizing for, great. But once you decide this is most important, this is what comes first, that creates this automatic check-in where you're saying, all right, this is most important to me. Is my life a reflection of that? The way that I invest my time, attention, energy, is this reflective that in my case, wisdom is the most important thing in my life? And any time that I recognize, because I regularly create these forced reflection moments where I have to check in and I have a little bit of space that I have to write something and fill it in, It'd be very easy without this to say, okay, yeah, check the box. Wis- wisdom's great. I'm, I'm, I'm totally living a life of wisdom. But I have to actually say, okay, what does it look like to live a life of wisdom right now? And then the follow-up is like, are you doing that? Like, huh, maybe, maybe there are some ways that I could course correct a little bit here. This always happens. It's a good, and it always starts with the questions that you ask yourself. And this dissonance is so helpful. I think this is a really good transition to we're talking about vision and how values feed in to vision is this dissonance. This is a source of perpetual motion, right? In physics, there's this, this chimera of if we could only build a machine that you put some energy into it and you get more energy out, right? Just an unfortunate fact of physics, you know, there's always some heat given off due to friction. And, you know, the only way, reason that we're surviving is because we have the sun, which is just like pouring a bunch of energy on us. And we just like spit heat back out into the universe. But generally in physics, there's this no way, there's this no way to get more out of something than what you're putting in. Definitely a metaphor for life. But I have found one exception, and this is what I think about a vision as a perpetual motion machine. And what is the fuel? The fuel is dissonance. The dissonance in that it's very difficult to hold these two irreconcilable models in your head. So think about something like for a long time, it was believed that the earth was the center of the universe, right? The sun, all the planets are just revolving around the earth. But as mathematics advanced, as the hold of the Catholic church start to weaken, people start to say is like, huh, these equations get really, really complex. If we're trying to calculate some astronomy saying that the earth is the center of the universe, it would be so much more simple if we said the sun was the center of the universe instead. And this model of, hey, the earth is the center of the universe, and well, the math works really well. If the sun is the center of the universe, at a certain point, the dissonance was too much, even for the church. And I'd say, okay, let's try some experiments and say that, hey, the sun is the center of the universe. In the same way, we have these two irre- irreconcilable models. Model one is here is a clear picture of where I am in this moment. This is what reality looks like. On the other hand, here's what I value. Here's what I want to accomplish with this time on the earth. 
And then I have these two pictures and I put them side by side and I'm comparing them. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to go on to accomplish all of these grand things. And I'm going to just like be all I can be. And I'm going to just value all these things all the time. And here's like, here's what I'm doing right now. It's like, huh, that's interesting. There's some differences between these pictures. It's like um, Reader Digest back in the day. They had these spot the difference things where you had two different images. They was like two pictures of a bedroom. And in one picture of the bedroom, there's a pair of shoes on the, one of the beds. And the other, the other one is a pair of high heels. Or in one image, and there's like a Pink Floyd folk poster. In the other, the other room, there's a Grateful Dead poster. And you're, you have to circle the differences. In the same way, we're circling the differences between where we are now and where we want to be. And so that's why this creating this vision is so important because it creates this dissonance. This is where I want to be. This is where I am now. How can I bring these two models of the world into reconciliation so that they're equivalent? And that's what continually propels us forward.